and Pastor Yoon. I want to remind you to look in, in your pews and fill out these cards before communion. You can put them in the offering plate or put them in the plate later and to register your attendance. And I also want to encourage you to look at your insert in your bulletin with lots of good information here. And remember to put this on your calendar. VBS is August 9th through the 13th. So put that on your calendar. We'd like everybody to come. Thank you and enjoy your worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If your Lord kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since you are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another. 
that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us kneel for our reflection. Let us confess our sin. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us a new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, in living our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold. 
and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be safe and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The epistle lesson is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the, word, in the world. But in Jesus Christ, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we, have, we both have access to one spirit, to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in him, you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and told. And when, when he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure to, even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them by, to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And they, when they f had found out, they said, Five and two fishy. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. 
And taking the five loaves and the two fishes, looked up to heaven and said a blessing. And the broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the flesh. And those who ate loaves were five thousand men. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us confess our Christian faith by reading the Apostles' Creed. Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the
Peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How many loaves do you have from our text reading today? Well, Abigail, my daughter, um, was really excited to graduate this year. She's been hyping the moment for a while, and for days she could not believe that she was a, it was going to actually happen. Her high school days were going to officially end, and she was very excited about that. She was, had expressed with us uh, her excitement about the next step in her life, and that is going to college. And yes, that is around the corner for her. And she was looking forward to all the college research and the college uh, camper tours and the possibilities of her just going to that one college that she um, picked. And she applied to five different colleges and she got into all of them. And yes, because of her hard work and her endless nights, she uh, got what she wanted and she chose her college and after her decision we sat down and talked about the expenses you know the tuition the book expense the uh, the food expense the gas expense in this case and we added all that up and then we also minus her scholarship and her grant money that she received uh, still there was not enough there was too much money there that she had to pay out of pocket. Well, the excitement of going to college seemed to just slip away after she saw that number. And all of a sudden, she was stunned, didn't know what to do. And her happiness turned into a frown. And how is she going to overcome this new hurdle now? Well, in our gospel reading today, we have a scene where there was most likely some commotion. You see, the disciples had come back from doing ministry. You see, earlier in the verses of this same chapter, Jesus sends them out two by two in pairs. And so Mark calls them here apostles for the first time. And that is significant. You see, a disciple is somebody that follows Jesus and his teachings. Well, an apostle is somebody that goes out and teaches the kingdom of God. So you can imagine the excitement that these men were having as they went out to the different uh, cities and the different towns preaching the gospel of Jesus. The many people that they met along the way and the many people that got healed along the way as well. Though Mark does not mention what they did exactly exactly, we can only assume that they did impact many lives with the gospel of Jesus. So Jesus, hearing their excitement, and he wants them to go rest after so much work. And there are pres primarily two reasons why Jesus wants them to go to this desolate place. You see the recent news of his cousin, John the Baptist, being killed. That was... That took a toll on Jesus. And Jesus wanted them to rest and to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the disciples alone, somewhere where they cannot be disturbed. He took them to an area that was lonely, uninhabited, and where nobody was going to be able to reach him, not even by a cell phone. Just like that, the disciples needed the rest. You see... Not only did the disciples need the rest, but also Jesus needed the rest. He just came back from preaching extensively, and he was being rejected by everybody in his hometown of Nazareth. He is emotionally and physically and spiritually exhausted. More than ever, he needs to rest and reflect and pray. Jesus wants to spend some time with the disciples, talk about their journey, his journey, and guide them forward. Jesus and the disciples were always busy with the people. Our text says here that it didn't even give them time to eat. That's how busy they were. Imagine have, being that busy. They quickly get onto this boat. They're going to a town near Bethsaida in the northern part of the Galilee at the entrance of the Jordan. 
river, and as they're making their exit, guess what? The crowd does not lose track of them. From the shore, they see that boat leaving. And as they go from town to town, the crowd follow them from the shore. And this crowd grew. And they met Jesus first where they were going. That says something about this crowd. So the resting that they were wanting and the resting that they needed, it was non-existent. And that's not what Jesus wanted for his disciples. So after a few hours of quiet time in the mountainside, he sees the magnitude of the crowd. And his heart, Jesus' heart, melts. Jesus' compassion drew him to put his resting to the side so that he will tend to the huge crowd. It means that in spite of all the unbelief he had encountered, in spite of his withdrawal to not do ministry for a minute... And to be alone with the disciples, his heart moved towards the crowd. The crowd grew in numbers from when they started. And at this point, Jesus doesn't see the numbers, mind you. Jesus sees their spiritual condition in which they did not have a shepherd that tended to them. They will wander around helplessly looking for their shepherd and were bound to perish if they did not find that shepherd. Jesus saw the fate of the people who had no shepherd. He began to shepherd them by teaching them many things. So in this process of teaching, the time passes, and it was late. And guess what? The disciples were concerned that the people's stomach will start to talk, if you understand what I'm saying. It's been a long time since they ate. They were somewhere in the desert, and nothing was close by for the crowd to go buy food like a 7-Eleven across the street. So the disciples did not understand why would Jesus hold the crowd so long. That sounds familiar. This really makes you wonder what they were thinking. After all, they just saw Jesus literally uh, bring the dead up. And now hungry people is just a problem. Their uneasiness just grows until they feel that they must act if Jesus does not. So after explaining the situation to Jesus, they urge him to send them away before it gets too late. Because they're not going to find any food to eat. The disciples thought that they were helping Jesus by warning him of the time and of the crowd. But what draws more attention here is not the time or the crowd, it's the unbelief from the disciples. Jesus responds to the disciples when he says, you give them something to eat. It's not what they were expecting. You see, Jesus was trying to lead his disciples to think of his almighty power and to place their reliance on him, on his wisdom, on his thoughtful care. They did not understand what Jesus was trying to tell them. They were clueless in the dark. Based on their response from the disciples that they gave to Jesus' proposition, they thought it was hopeless. The disciples confirmed this when they tell Jesus, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them to eat? By the way, 200 denarii worth of bread is $293 for a crowd of 5,000 worth of bread. Good luck. They were very frustrated in a way questioning Jesus. In other words, this much money will not get us anything compared to the size of of the crowd. Well, guess what? In many ways, you are like the disciples at times. When you start to question or doubt what Jesus can do for you. And when you start to think that Jesus can't handle your problems. When you don't think what he's doing makes sense. So you ask, is it possible for Jesus to handle my problems. Will Jesus be there for when I am in doubt 
and I struggle to put my trust in him? Can Jesus heal my broken relationships? Can Jesus still be present to guide me despite my sinful condition? Where sometimes the issues of the world take precedence of God in my heart. Do you honestly trust Jesus to be that primary force working for change in your life as he promised to be? You know, going back to my daughter's college discussion, I noticed that her face changed. That smile of going to college turned into that frown. And I had compassion on her. And I didn't like what I saw. They say that daddy's little girl for a reason, right? And I said to her, listen, don't worry. The rest of the money We'll get it. We'll help along the way. You make sure you make those grades. It was all that she needed to hear. That frown, back to that smile. That quick. Problem solved. Well, you see, Jesus does the same for you and more. Thank God he's not like us. We're limited. He comes to you today and invites you to sit down in the green grass, just like he does with the crowd in our text, so that he may serve you. Though the altar here, where we meet him, does not have grass, is where you and I meet him, so he can serve you. It is where your broken relationships are restored. It is here where he casts all doubts away. And it is here where Jesus tells you that there is no problem that he cannot handle. Jesus is present to forgive you all of your sins. The best thing of this is that Jesus does not pay an interest fee. That's the best part. Jesus is more than what you expected. Just as he fed that 5,000 member crowd... And that's only men, mind you. It's more. Just as he did that, he says the same thing for you. He does not just give you enough. He gives you the leftovers as well. Uh, You know what? I'm so glad that Jesus does not measure things out so he can keep account. He broke the bread, multiplied the fish, and he did not keep track of how much people were eating. Never did he say in this text, that is enough for you, move on, eat it, go away. He never said that. He keeps on giving. So all the thought of calculation of what your portion is, is left behind. And you have him going on giving more and more forever. That is Jesus. From his hands, gifts that grow more and more beyond little calculation of what is owed to you or what is enough from Jesus' hand. And he does not stop at enough. And for that, I am grateful. Amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, by your spirit, you have established your holy church on the proclamation of Christ our Savior. Sustain the apostolic preaching to the end of the earth, that in every tongue the mighty works of God in Christ may be heard. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live, to serve according to your promises and commands. Lead our homes to confess our confidence in your power to raise the dead, new, now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, for the health and salvation of all, especially including military members, Rene, Scott, Dan, Kevin, Rachel, Abby, Thomas, Jim, Tim, Jonathan, Paul, Chandler, Stephen, Randall, Chris, Sean, Stephen, Evan, Lace, Paul, Lada, also including the sick people. Jean, Carl, Heather, Mike, Jimmy, Boy, Haywood, Ellen, George, Linda, Claire, Carrie, Simon, Jake, Mark, Brian, Lynch, Judy, Paul, Lisa, Mark, Matt, Rob, Ernie, Lisa, Anna, Ina, Vinny, Brian, Ethan, Smithy, Diane, Ralph, Lauren, Catherine, and Russell. And also remember the friends of friends and the family of John Van Gorda. You have called him to heavenly home. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, give hope and peace and consolation and comfort to the family and friends of John Van Gorda in the hope of a kingdom, heavenly kingdom that the spirit would heal the sick, comfort the hurting and the grieving, renew the broken across the face of the earth, look with favor on all creation and fill the hearts of the faithful, kindling in them the fire of his love. Lord, in your mercy. Enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may ever be Thankful for such grace and comfort ourselves by it in all tribulation and temptation, and at last obtain eternal salvation. Who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one Lord, one God, now and forever. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please have a seat. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestowed on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not be die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and thank
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness and life and salvation that comes to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on us as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also took the cup at the supper. When he had given thanks, he gave to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, remember us of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
first term. The true body and true blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve in true faith to life and blessing, depart in peace and joy. Amen. Amen. O God, the Father, fountain of, and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent to your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord.